Hey everybody, welcome back to Her Black Hand, the podcast where we talk about everything and everything goes. I am your host, Alexis Lawson, and I am a brown skin woman with box braids in her hair with golden brown tips. I am currently wearing a navy blue cardigan, a white long sleeve ribbed shirt, some blue jean flare jeans, and some cheetah print sandals. I currently have French tip glitter gold nails, and I am wearing clear lip gloss once again. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about protecting your peace. P-E-A-C-E and P-I-E-C-E. So protecting your peace from the standpoint of a creator, whether that's music that you create, poetry that you create, or simply just the creator of the things that you do. We're going to be talking about how important it is to protect your peace in the space in which you're working, how we're going to be giving credit to those who inspire us. And we're just going to be talking a little bit about how to own and stand in our purpose when it comes to our creation. So you probably noticed that there was no speaking segment at the beginning of today's episode, and that is because we are actually going to be dissecting and talking about a song instead. The song that we're going to be talking about is called Michael Angelo by Caleb Colossus, and you probably have heard of this song or heard the song or heard of the name if you watch Rhythm and Flow, the show on Netflix with T.I., Cardi B, Chance the Rapper. And so this was probably my favorite song of the entire season. I just like the beat of it. I like the words. I love the pre- presentation of his video in that season. And so the first line that I want to talk about, the first lyric, it says, first I pierce them in the heart, then I give them my truth. I think I just love this line because it's literally what I want to do with my writing. Like it's just not enough to touch somebody's heart. I'm trying to pierce it so that they get everything that I'm telling them. And I think as artists, as creators, as people who are just trying to leave something behind with the people that we interact with, it's not enough to just speak to somebody. It's not enough to just give them the painting. Like we really are trying to get deeper inside of who they are so that we can connect with them on a level that we don't get to connect with in a face-to-face basis, something deeper than just a casual interaction. And so I really, really like that because visually all I see is like a little sewing needle, like literally piercing a heart and then somebody like whispering into a heart. Like I'm telling you my truth. I'm bearing my soul to you and telling you everything that you can't see from just the first glance of me. And so the next line, well, it's really the hook. It says, when he gets the brush, hush, watch him paint the flow. A young black Michael Angelo, let me say my piece. Sheesh, gotta let him know the shit that's coming out of my soul. Like, do y'all hear how smooth that is? So let's just start from the beginning. It says, when he gets the brush, hush. When he gets the brush, hush. Like you, if somebody tell you to just like watch and be quiet, you just are, you are ready for something monumental to happen. And so this being a song titled from an artist's name, like when he gets the brush, hush. When I get the pen, be quiet. Like I'm finna explode some shit right in front of your face. And so you say, watch him paint the flow. Watch him paint the flow. I think I really like this line because it gives us like a visual because he's literally painting you a picture with the words that he's rapping because literally this whole entire song you could probably visualize him saying and doing everything that he's talking about and say a young black Michael Angelo let me say my piece not peace as in p-e-a-c-e p-i-e-c-e so let him say his piece like let him get what he need to say off his chest sheesh he gotta let him know the shit that's coming out of his soul like just say it back and listen Just let me say my piece so that you can really know what is going on and the shit that's going on in my soul, like really sitting at my core. If you just sit back and watch this painting, watch him paint the flow, watch him this painting that he's creating and the words and the lyrics and the cadence that he's bringing forth in this masterpiece of the song Michelangelo. Like, do y'all not see how insane That is like this song lyrically is insane. The meaning behind the lines is insane. Him speaking his truth and telling stories about his childhood and how he was brought up and what encouraged him to be the man he is today and how he got into rapping and how he went the regular route that everybody else went going to school and how his life 
took a shift and took a turn and how the things that he thought that he were going to be doing didn't necessarily become what he is doing actually. So I just wanted to start y'all off with that one because just set it up. We're going to protect our peace. We're going to be talking about art. We're going to be talking about doing it all. And I just wanted to set y'all up with that one because I just love this song. So if you don't have this song, never heard it, go to whatever streaming platform you use, YouTube, Netflix, watch the series and type in Michelangelo by Caleb Colossus. All right, so we just going to get right into it. We're going to talk about protecting our peace as an artist. And so the first thing that I want to talk about is not allowing hate to deter you from what makes you happy. I think a lot of the time as artists, we get into these spaces where we are creating art for the enjoyment of others and not the enjoyment of ourselves. I don't know how many times I've gotten into like writing ruts where I'm just like, I do not know what to write, but is it that I don't know what to write or that I'm trying to write for others to please them? And I'm not necessarily pleasing myself with the writing that I'm doing because this is what I do. It's supposed to come easy to me and it's, I'm making it harder than it needs to be because I'm trying to write for someone else or because somebody said they didn't like this on a piece that I wrote before or that they didn't like the way I performed this. Like I, I let hate and people's comments really sway the way I write, the way I perform, the things that I put out on the internet. And I think as writers, we really need to stop doing that because once we start doing that, our art is no longer ours. We are making art for the people and no longer making art for ourselves. We have to have the mindset that like I made this for myself like it's nice if you enjoy it it's nice if you like it but the sole purpose of me creating this painting creating this song creating whatever that it is that you create this dish this food if you're a chef it was not for the fulfillment of you us as artists we have to realize that we do not get joy out of the happiness of others we really have to find the joy within ourselves within our art to be able to maintain years to come us creating this art like me creating this podcast or me creating a spoken word piece like if I sat down and wrote every time that I wrote was thinking about what other people liked I would never be fulfilled and never be happy with the art that I was producing and so as artists I think that's something that we really need to pay attention to and not allow the hate and comments that we got from whatever we put out on the internet because we all know that the internet and social media is such a cruel space that we really need to pay attention and be cognizant of what we're doing and how we're allowing other people to influence the things that we create. This leads me into my second point of protecting your peace as an artist, allowing your muse credit. I don't know about you, but as soon as Malcolm and Marie came out, I was so eager to watch it. When I tell you it was probably the worst movie that I have seen in a while. And I, it's not because of how it was directed or how it was produced. It was a well-produced movie, but it's the fact that it was so triggering with no trigger warning and how they painted it as a love story when all I could see was the toxic relationships and toxic masculinity and mis use of trusting things within that relationship and it really triggered some parts of me that I just felt the need to talk about because that movie was so much it was so much in the two hours of the movie and I was just not prepared for that because I was being so this black and white love story I'm thinking finally we got a story about some black love and I turn it on and the first thing you see is them arguing I was not prepared for that so that's what we're going to talk about in this portion of today's episode so the movie starts off with Zendaya being upset and she's walking around the house she's storming around not speaking not really giving him any affection after what appears to be a big night for him that we later discover is he didn't win an award or something for this movie that he produced and she's being upset because we find out that he did not acknowledge her while he's on stage so we're going to talk about allowing your muse credit so the things around us and the people we interact with of course influence the things that we produce the things that we create but we as artists are not obligated are not mandatory it's not mandatory for us to give our muse credit there's a way to acknowledge them and give a tribute to them but they are not the sole purpose for the creation of whatever you created so I completely understand her being upset from the standpoint of a partner because I know that my friends and my partners I always be like yo can I read this to you like that takes a lot of energy to listen and critique and give feedback on an art piece that somebody holds close to their heart because then you get emotionally invested in something that you didn't create so it's like you're a part of it so I understand why she would have wanted to be acknowledged to be thanked but 
Let's also talk about how she thought that the movie was based off of her life. Now, although at the end he did say that it was based off a whole bunch of other women's lives, and we'll talk about that, it is not wild for her to think that the story, uh, well, at least the story that they told us as viewers, was based on her life. So from an artist standpoint and friend of artists, other artists, I understand that there are times in our career where we need to acknowledge the people who influence us and gives us ideas. And that may have been one of those moments, whether he decided to see it like that or not, because he believed that she was not the sole influence of the movie. There are times where we need to acknowledge the people around us for not only listening to our ideas, but just for being there and sticking it out when we were developing these grand projects that we grow to love and have this fond and strong attachment to. And so did I say toxic? Did I say this movie was toxic? Because let's just get into this bathtub scene. So not only was he invading her space when she was trying to get away from this problem and just coming talking and how we thought that they were going to make up and kiss and make up and do all of that, but they didn't. They never did. They always kept arguing. And in this sense, he decided to throw in her face when she he brought up again how she thought that the movie was based off of her life and beginning to throw things in her face that she shared with him in privacy and in confidence. And so the one thing that really stuck out to me is how he began to talk about the different women and how parts of the movie were based on different women and different experiences that he had with other women going as far as talking about the sexual things that he done with them where they did it and where it happened like that was so uncalled for and so that portion of the movie along with other portions of the movie was very triggering for me because I have been in a situation like that when I published my book you know the book is about romance the book is about heartbreak the book is really about a young girl coming into her own and experiencing the things that nobody prepared her for nobody taught her about love nobody taught her about heartbreak nobody taught her how to stop loving the wrong people and so the poems in my book the beauty in my bare bones are about multiple people about multiple experiences sometimes the things that I refer to as people are inanimate objects but you wouldn't know that unless you are me and so I've had a person say that I need to thank them and I should be grateful that I experienced them because the whole book is about them and at the time I was just not in the emotional space to break that apart and have that conversation with them but I know later down the road when I did have a moment to sit back I'm like this nigga really think my whole book is about him. This nigga think I care enough about him to give him that much satisfaction. Like you have so little importance in my life and you think so highly of yourself and think you have this grand position in my life to think I will write a whole book about you. Nigga, please don't ever like try me better. Try my artistry better. I would never write a whole story solely about you. You think the only person I loved was you. And so I really felt how she was possibly feeling in that exact moment if this was like a real life scenario like when she was talking when he was talking about the women that he slept with and where he slept with them because that same person that assumed that my entire book this this piece of project that I had bore my soul into was about him he started to tell me how special I thought I was and how I really didn't have as much importance in his life that I thought I did and he started bringing up these different women and telling me how he had been with them and how he had loved them because that really hurt me at that time because I'm I'm sitting here trying to love this man and he's telling me how he's loved other women and I'll just never compare or amount to them. So I really felt that. And I just had to pause the movie at that point because I'm just like, this is so toxic and y'all sold us this as a love story. If this is the type of love that you want, I am fucking disgusted and I don't want to be a part of that love story. I don't want that to be anybody's idea of love because this is not a love story. This, I understand that you have to argue and all of that, but the things that were said and the conversations between those two people in that movie were disgusting. And so speaking of Malcolm and Marie, Marie wanted to be an actress and she kind of just like let her dreams go to the side and so that's why I want to talk about remembering who you create for like don't forget the joy that the craft of your choice once brought you I think we get so caught up trying to blow up that the quality of our work begins to lack we try so hard to mass produce all this content that the quality and the core and the depth of what we create begins to become less important and it shouldn't because the quality of our work is what people gets people to come back It's what gets people hooked because they know that we're putting our soul we're putting our heart into the things that we are sharing with the world and then when we 
get into this rut of not being able to create, not being able to produce the content that we usually do or that we stop getting the responses that we usually do, the interactions, because, you know, everybody's trying to make it big on social media because that's where it is. Like, there's not a lot of people, people interaction, especially during this pandemic. We get down because we're not producing the work that we used to, but really, are we not producing the work that we're used to because we're not good at the thing that we do or because we no longer know how to create for our own fulfillment and our own joy because we're so hell bent on giving others work for them when it should really just be for us and for their enjoyment. Another thing that I cannot stand is the I do it for dot dot dot. I do it for my mama. I do it for my dead homies. Like it's okay to want to make somebody proud, but When did we start doing everything in our lives for somebody else? When are y'all going to start doing stuff for yourself? Because I know my mama ain't go to college to get this degree, study up late all these nights. I know my mama didn't join no sorority. So I'm doing it for myself. When I write these stories, when I write all of these things, yes, I want other people to see themselves in it. But I do it for myself. The active activity of me doing something I do it for myself yes my goal or I want them to be proud of me I want people to look up to me but I do it for myself that's what we need to start teaching people oh I do it for myself oh I did this for myself oh I did this for me do you not know the pride that you will have and the excitement that you'll have when you do things for yourself I think it'll make us more accountable for the things that we do if we hold ourselves like oh I'm doing this for myself this is going to better me like you can say oh I do this for my mama but like these niggas been saying they be doing it for their mama and they still not doing it so when you gonna start doing it for yourself when you gonna start bettering yourself when are you gonna start creating that poem for yourself when are you gonna start painting that portrait for yourself for the advancement of yourself you let's center this around you protecting your Peace as an artist, how are you going to protect your peace if you're constantly doing it for somebody else? When are you going to do something for yourself? When are you going to learn the fulfillment and joy of doing things for yourself and creating for yourself and doing it all for you? You need to be whole yourself, doing it for yourself. You cannot do your artistry and do this art without having yourself in it because when you take yourself out and you're no longer doing it for yourself, then you're no longer going to get the product that you want got before you started giving pieces of it away to everybody else so when are you going to do it for yourself that's the real question we're going to ask here when are we going to start doing it for ourselves so i'm just going to leave that there just a little sprinkle for y'all to think about when are you going to do it for yourself and the next time you hear somebody saying oh i do it for my mama ask them when are they going to do it for themselves get this degree for yourself get that job for yourself get that new car for yourself paint this picture for yourself you can still do it for your mama but your primary person that you should do it for is yourself And so that brings me into the last portion of this podcast called Peaceful Creations. We have to break the stereotype that all art is made from pain. I don't know about you, but as an artist, as a person who are around artists, we always have this idea that pain is the equivalent to art and all of our art and everything that we create has to come from this deep and dark and locked away and hidden, painful, disgusting place. It does not have to come from that art can be made from joy art can be made from love art can be made from some of the most wholesome places that we oftentimes overlook trying to find something in those deep dark places that we don't even want to be ourselves so why do we associate one of the most beautiful things in human creation art with such ugly things all art does not have to come from pain the only time that you create does not have to be when you're sad does not have to be when you're broken does not have to be when you're not feeling your best you need to learn i also need to work on this so not just saying you we all as artists as people need to learn how to produce some of our best things when we're at our best i think once we learn that and once we master that skill the art that we used to create won't even shine in comparison we need to learn how to create things from joy do we not know the effects of creating only from a space of sadness of melancholy nobody wants to be sad all the time so the art that you produce does not have to be this sad production of work That's what we really need to learn because just because you have had moments in your life where you've been in pain 
doesn't mean that the happy times aren't important too. You feel me? Like the happy times in your life should not be overshadowed by the painful, bad memories that we have in our life. And I think that's something that artists and people in general just need to hold on to. Why do we have to be sad artists? Why was that? Like, I understand why it was a thing because most of the artists, especially like ancient artists and like 1800s and all of that, they created art out of like a sad and miserable place when people was doing drugs and people was dying. Like, I understand that. And that's still relevant now. But at the same time, we have the power right now, our generation right now, people who are alive in 2021 in this century, we have the power to change the narrative of art. We have the power to teach younger generations that all of their art and all of the words that they say and all of the art that they share with the world does not have to be one from pain and it can be from happiness. You can write about the time you got married and not include the times that y'all fussed and fight. I was watching some TikTok the other day and I saw this video and this man was saying his vows to his wife and he was talking about how they was fussing and fighting. I wish a nigga would get up at the altar and talk about the arguments that we had on one of the glorious days, supposedly one of the best days of our life why is you bringing that up this ain't even a place for that so why is you bringing that up ain't nobody here to hear about us arguing and fighting they hear about how we in love so talk about how we in love like you see it's moments like that where the narrative was totally changed because of one little bad thing so just imagine having a bowl full of bad cereal like you don't even want the clean fresh good cereal because you surrounded by all the bad cereal we need to find some good cereal in our life we need to pinpoint those good things that happen on a day-to-day basis and really learn to sit with them and acknowledge them so that we don't continue to only and solely create art from these hurtful places that we ourselves don't even want to be at so why are we like it's sometimes a release to get it out and I completely understand that because sometimes I'll be like you know what I just need to let this out I know it sound bad and I know it was bad when it happened but like literally it's sitting on my heart it's hurting it's hurting my heart so I have to let it out but at the same time not everything has to be so miserable not everything has to be so sad like yes I'm a I'm I'm a believer of finding the good and the bad but at the same time sometimes there's no good in the bad Stop trying to make dirt look pretty. Sometimes dirt is just dirt. Like, it's just as simple as that. Like, it's not nothing more, nothing less. Like, let that be that. Let those bad times be those bad times and show everybody that you're trying to share your story with that there is light and love to you. Everything that you do does not have to be surrounded by pain and oppression and misery. You are love. You are light. You walk with the lightness of clouds. Like, You are a powerful person and the power should not be held in the things that weigh you down. And I think that's so important, not just for artists, but for people to know as they navigate through their lives. Because if all of our work is full of pain and muted of color, then we will continue to latch on to those things for inspiration because it's not a mistake to feel or like feel a need to feel those things. But like, We do not need to latch on and gravitate towards the things that hurt us just because we think that they inspire us to create these better pieces. Because although I write a lot of poems about love and about heartbreak, I am learning and I'm trying to experience the things that make me feel like light. I don't want to write about love in such a sad concept. I want to write about love in all of its fullness and all of its richness and all of its wholesomeness. I want to write that, but to write that, I have to experience that. So if that's not your experience, I completely understand that. But if you do have those good experiences, do not feel ashamed or scared to share them because we want to hear about good. With everything going on in the world, I just want to hear about something good. Not that I don't want to acknowledge the bad things that are happening all around us, but it's exhausting trying to carry the weight of everything that's going on that's not necessarily peaches and cream and like you're just trying to like share something good it's like being in a classroom full of people over talking you and you got that little person in the back that's raising their hand waiting to be called on and nobody ever calls on them i'm calling on y'all to talk about the good stuff talk about the things that make y'all happy talk about the things that make y'all smile talk about the things that bring y'all joy like it's time that we start talking about things that bring us joy and if your form of talking and communication is through your art is through your writing is through whatever you decide to produce through whatever You need to share that joy because there's such a small amount of it going around. 
There's such a small amount going around. And I think when more people talk about it, the more people will acknowledge the joyful moments in their lives, the joyful moments in their day. If we're only talking and bitching about the stuff that we don't necessarily like, then we never have time to acknowledge the great things that happen within our day, within our lives, because we're so hell bent on depending on those bad things to carry us into the next thing. That we don't realize how crippling that is. And that's just all I have to say about that. So like I tell my kids, what season we in? We in the season of minding our business. Y'all need to tell people we in the season of protecting our peace. Not only like our spiritual and soul peace, we need to protect our artistry peace. We need to protect and guard them and block them from all the negativity that is surrounding us and do the things that we enjoy doing. Say the words that we enjoy saying. Create the pieces that bring us the most fulfillment and the most joy. And if you are friends of artists or an artist, allow your muse to have some credit, but don't let their credit overtake and overshadow your experiences and your hard work because you are the artist and this is your piece. So don't allow them to make you feel as though they deserve some type of recognition. Because the people around you should know that, like, as an artist, you get your inspiration, you get your ideas from the things that you experience and the people you interact with. So they should just be grateful that they get to experience you, while you should also be grateful and appreciative of them for allowing you to experience things and seeing things from different lights that you would not have seen if you had not been around them. And just remember who you are creating for. Create for yourself. Pray for yourself. Let you be the moving factor in your life and let you be the sole creator of everything that you are loving to do. And if you are an artist, I just challenge you to look back at the last thing that you created and ask yourself, was this created from a place of pain? Or was this created from a place of joy? And if it was created from a place of pain, I encourage you to try and create something from a happy time that you remember or a happy point within your day or something that brings you joy or even try something that you wouldn't necessarily try. If you're an artist, try a new art form. If you're a writer, try a new form of writing. If you do anything that ends in a product Try something different and see the reaction that you get. If you feel more connected to it, maybe that's something you should incorporate more because we need to get into the space of not only creating things that are painful, that come from pain, that come from bad experiences because there is beauty in our art. Art is some of the most beautiful things of human creation and we need to take it as that and contribute to its beauty giving it beautiful stories and beautiful messages behind what we're doing. So that is all that I have for today's episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in to episode three, Protecting Your Peace. Do not forget to subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you are listening on so that you can be notified every time a new episode is released. And do not forget to connect with me on Instagram at HerBlackHand so that you can stay up to date on any notifications about the podcast and to follow my writing. That's all that I have for y'all in this one. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.